Hello, welcome to Spotlight, picking out the colour of life amongst the daily gloom. Spotlight, brought to you by the Isle of Man Arts Council. This evening, the ever effervescent non stop cauldron of creativity, which is Jackie Morrie Grace, talking about her latest poetry collection just hitting the shelves. We head west to get in tune with the Harmony Choir and to Laxey to look at the latest exhibition at the wonderful Loom Gallery. Remember, do get in touch with any creative artistic endeavours you may be involved in, planning, hoping to create or would really like to put in that spotlight. Artistic, poetic, visual, theatrical, musical, literary, ceramics, choirs this evening. Email spotlight at manxradio.com or straight to me, Howard Kane at manxradio.com. They're all read. Get in touch. Now, if you know Jackie Mori Grace, you'd be familiar with the multifaceted artist who embraces writing, music, poetry and art for her many and various projects. There's all something on the go. The latest is her collection of poetry entitled There Are Worse Places to Hide Than Inside Secrets. Jackie told me the title comes from periods of ill health she's had to endure in her life. And first I asked her to expand on her writing process. OK, so we were talking about this earlier, weren't we, on the way up? And we were talking about how some people process um, kind of difficult feelings and emotions through poetry. I don't think I did that so much. I think what I find with writing is it takes me right out of myself. So I don't need to be processing anything. I just enter this whole new world. And for me, that's the power of, of uh, poetry for me and, and general fictional writing and what I enjoy the most. So when I'm really in full flow, I'm, I'm completely lost in it. And the way that I write is very is very fluid I think and, and um, the way that I memorise everything is very fluid so I, it's literally about a flow and, and entering different worlds and, and for that that is empowering because when you're very sick and you are alone a lot which I was uh, there were long periods when I couldn't really walk or you know or episodes I mean, basically, when you have like a chronic illness, people see in your best days, so they don't see you being sick, right? But what they don't see are the days when you're stuck in bed and you can't get out and do stuff and and when you're in a lot of pain. Um, And so those would be the times when I was doing a lot of writing. It's slightly annoying now that I am not doing so much writing because I'm so much better. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't want to. <laughs> don't I see where you're coming from on that. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah. And how much do you think your writing's changed? You said just as we were looking at your book, you've got in front of you there that that you know you look back at some of your early poems and think it's. I don't know. You see, you, you said, "Oh, I don't know. I could write that now." Do you do you, do you sort of look back at your earlier work and and think it's very different? And do you still enjoy your early work when you look back at it? Well, the strange thing is, my style hasn't changed. So my style is, in terms of my writing style, hasn't altered at all, um, which I, I don't think it has. Other people might disagree, actually. So I still have the same kind of flow. The way I use rhymes, I'm very into like alliteration and half rhymes and slap rhymes, you know, or, or I like playing with words. And that hasn't altered. But yeah, when I first started writing, it was very storytelling. And I do look back and go, I can't believe I've written that. Because... I don't know where it came from. And my favourite poems, well, not my favourite, I've got, you know, okay, some of my favourite poems are going to be my next book that the Arts Council have uh-huh. also funded, um, which are like prose poems and they're based on like just, they just go into these crazy worlds. That I, I can't even describe it, but the language is very floral. Um, I got a little bit carried away with the language for those pieces. But once I'd finished three of those, I couldn't write in that style again. What I'm trying to say is my writing recently has been more political. And I don't know whether that's because I've settled more into my persona as a, as a as an artist and whether I just have more confidence um I've always found that I can construct a narrative quite well so I I seem to be able to like you know get a structure quite good with a strong mm-hmm. kind of story going through it and a strong ending and I found that with my storytelling stuff and now I seem to be able to put that into political stuff and so where with this collection now then this uh, third book you've got out now third collection any are there specific themes for this? You were saying you're writing more politically now, coming from that angle. Is this a mixture of different themes in this book? Yeah, yeah, it's a whole shebang. So what I've done, um, I have some little Annabelle pictures. So Annabelle is just one of my characters. I, I really like characters. And I, I love kind of creating different characters. And, and she is just a, a character that came that I started drawing. And Annabelle kind of ties the whole story together in a rather cryptic roundabout way. So she heads up each title 
um, page. So we start off. Shall I just open up the book and Do. have a look? We start off the first section. It's, it's quite a short section, and it's called Secrets of the Perpetually Sick. But then we move on, and Annabelle says here, still clutching her dreams, if only by a thread. But when we move on to the next section, which is Fantasticals, cocooned or ensnared Annabelle had no choice it was time to decide so it moves on through the idea about you know being perpetually sick and there are a few little hard hitting poems in there um that they're not they're not my most hard hitting I kept them out okay and then it goes into the idea that she can go into her own fantastical world and then it moves through the different sections so there's a section about nature and there's one of just tender tales for my family a couple of family members um there are my slam poems my slam wins my power poems which are more like my political ones mm -hmm. and y yeah but the annabelle whole, carries us through the story the whole range wonder and we should say of course like i said like all your books not only do you do all the words you do all the art as well which is a i think a terrific skill to be able to do it is the do i take it then the the words come first you put the collection together and then add the art to it or do the two do the two grow side by side how does it work for you i'm not an artist <laughs> well you are clearly you, you like i said you've done three books and as far as i'm aware you've done the art for all of them i have okay yeah. so i started dabbling around around pandemic i really wanted to be an artist i um i asked a friend to do like the pictures for raven stair hill and she said jackie do it yourself right and i was like i can't draw and i really couldn't i didn't even know like what pencils you used what pens you used everything was rubbish but i managed to create these little sketches they kind of work with the theme of the book i like concepts i love bringing concepts together so that happened and then it got to Priscilla's song and it was like these little watercolour birds happened and the birds were there to kind of guide our ghost to her bones where they rested in the sea. And then with this one, originally I'd drawn these little scrappy ballerinas and they were really not very good at all, but I was only putting a collection together to keep the, the poems safe, really. I memorised everything and I was forgetting stuff and then I was like... Um, feeling what's the point of doing any more why, why am I writing what's the point there's not, not enough opportunities over here for us poor poets to go out and perform I try and create them other amazing people do as well like Bill Strutt and Hazel Tear and Nevaeh has started doing it um, Oceana and uh, we need more more performance opportunities really so that was the initial thing basically whenever I feel like I'm under a lot of pressure and I have to retreat I have like a big explosion of creativity and the little Annabelle's just happened and um and the minute I finished a book, I couldn't draw her anymore. <laughs> wow. And so I talk in a book, because we were talking about the slam, and which, which we were talking about the slam, weren't we, Howard? Mm. Who won the slam, Howard? Uh, well, I, I had that <laughs> honour this year. <laughs> you did. Okay, so, um, yeah, we were, we were talking about the slam and, uh, and Howard doing an absolutely amazing job with his fabulous poem about the... What was it about, Howard? I just called it air traffic control. Yeah, yeah, it was fairly topical. Mm. Well, yes, yeah, we like to keep things topical, I thought, because everyone's been... One way or another has a story to tell about flying on and off the Isle of Man over the last year or two, I think. So I thought there was it was something everyone would relate to, which I think they did. I think they did, because <laughs> you got a whopping big, massive first, so you're actually catching up with me... Um, so so you're now double poetry Sam champion. I am, yeah, that's uh, that's um, I'm very pleased with that. Yeah, I'm with a second pleased. in your pocket as well. Right, but, uh, so. Yeah, yeah, I do, I do. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm. It's you know, it's a wonderful thing to do, and you've just got to encourage more people to go out there and do it. And it's always it's good fun. It is competition, but it's always done in in good heart. And I think um, you know, I've never seen anyone throw their toys out of the pram. Everyone takes it in good faith, and. Uh, yeah, there's always, and there's lots of different styles. I don't know how you judge the different styles because there's so many different styles at the Slam, isn't there? There's everything from comic to very, very, you know, very serious political, heart on sleeve, things dealing with, you know, inner angst and, as you say, health issues and things like that. There's all sorts of different topics and different styles. So it's it's, it's like comparing black with white sometimes, but, you know, the... the if the, the rules are the way the rules work and the judges have a very difficult job I wouldn't fancy it <laughs> and one way or another they come up with a winner <laughs> they do have a horrible job and there are five judges so you know they, they all have to um, well I, they just given their results and then you have to tot everything up but people were quite unanimous in what I saw but uh, I had loads of fun comparing this year so that was, yes, that was yeah, nice that was a new experience for you see? Yeah. oh I thoroughly enjoyed it yeah yeah just sitting there and just watch and rooting for everyone being able to just root for people rather than feeling you know like you're in the spotlight but then the trouble is you you can't enter if you're comparing it, can you? That's the trouble. I don't feel like I need to enter it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great collection, great title. If you want to know how it got that interesting name, get yourself a copy. She explains far better than I can. 
in the back of the book. They're available via quirky.im, the Bridge Bookshop, Ramsey and Port Heron, to the best of my knowledge, or via Jackie herself on her website, Jackie Murray Grace, double R on Murray, E-Y, all one word, dot Weebly, W-E-E-B-L-Y dot com. We'll hear a few more thoughts from Jackie next week. I never want to sit in her laurels. Come to think of it, I don't think she sits much at all, to be honest. She's always full of so much creative energy. But she told me something about her next book. Yes, already in production, it seems. The Harmony Children's Chorus Bangalore, India, led by Sandra Oberoi. Well, Sandra and the Harmony Choir are visiting the Isle of Man later this month. Singers all pupils at Harmony, which is the music school of the same name based in Bangalore. They'll be collaborating with local singers here on the island, doing a workshop and performing in a grand concert at the Peel Centenary Centre, compared by Manx Radio's own Judith Lay. To find out more, I headed out west. Uh, it's Dr. Peter Lippmann and Director of Music at uh, Cathedral Isle of Man. And we are actually there, it's all busy around the back here with lots of work going on at the cathedral, so we're at the uh, school just around the corner there to talk about the Harmony Choir coming over. Now, well, first off, tell us a bit about the choir, who they are and what they'll be doing. So uh, the Harmony Chorus is actually from Bangalore in India and is directed by Sandra Oberoi. And uh, it was a chance meeting between myself and Sandra as she was visiting the island earlier on in the year at the cathedral that uh, has led to, to their visit and, and obviously then on to uh, the, the, the choir festival. As, is this a mixed choir, young person's choir? What sort is it? So it's a youth choir, I understand. The chorus itself is about 100 strong, uh, but I believe there's only about 20 of them coming on this trip um, because of visa, uh, visa regulations from India is particularly harsh at the moment. Um, I believe they're between 16 and 21. And so the idea is what, obviously they're going to be performing here, but also sort of interacting with the sort of Manx scene as well? Yeah, so they want to explore uh, our culture and uh, what led to the choir festival was the possibility of us exploring their culture. Uh, so it's a mix, really. So they will come along and perform their own style of music, um, uh, but they will also come and do a workshop with us uh, at the Centenary Centre to learn about the English choral tradition and we will learn about the Bollywood choral tradition, which I didn't know there was one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know that. I did. So, so you're going to be leading the workshop? Or? I'll be co-leading. I'll be leading the English part of it. We'll be doing some work on some Tudor English music uh, with both choirs. And then Sandra will lead the, the Indian uh, ex- excerpt of it. You know. This sounds like an excellent mix, doesn't it? Sort of the traditional Indian choral music mixed in with, like I said, English Tudor music. It sounds like a great mix. Absolutely. And I think the, uh, the choirs are really looking forward to it. Um, the lay clerks, which are the, the, the adult singers, some of them have said they're quite happy to go along with this, but they draw a line at dancing. So they won't be dancing, <laughs> but they'll be looking at the music. But what I think will be really interesting is the mix of the wealth of both of those cultures and exploring how how similar they can be, but also how different. And I think that's always a wonderful thing to do, isn't it? Because on the one hand, you might think that they are quite literally a million miles apart, geographically, physically, whatever else. But you always can find sort of strands of commonality, I think, between musics. Certainly music is the commonality. Music is a language that uh, both they and and we can speak uh, together. And, um, and a complete mix of ages. I mean, for example, my choir uh, that are taking part, the Cathedral Choir, will involve both children and adults. Uh, so our children will be as young as uh, eight and then up to some of the senior adults, whereas their choir, as I've mentioned, is generally 16 to 21. Um, but they w- won't have had the experience of singing with mature singers and experienced singers such as the Cathedral Lay Clark. So I think they're quite looking forward to that. So is the hope then to sort of use this as a building block or a foundation for sort of future visits like this and building more towards this sort of choir festival, as it were? Yeah, I mean, the idea was a conversation between myself and Sandra, which looked at performance, but we also want the choirs to take away uh, an educational element. So for future festivals, we're looking at possibly doing some, uh, offering some teaching to local uh, school teachers that are preparing their choirs for the guild. I'm off. I'm often asked uh, quite frequently by local teachers for input on how to run their choirs and how to conduct their choir, how to conduct their choirs. Uh, so as a bolt on to this festival, in the future we'd like to offer 
uh, some kind of practical workshops at, at, at how we can help uh, the local teachers and their choirs on the island. And would this then be something that would run through the year or do you see it as being a, a sort of, you know, something of a couple of weekends each year or, or a sort of a time for a festival each year? Yeah, I think it'll be a festival, a weekend festival. Um, obviously, this year it involves, um, as I've mentioned, the Cathedral Choir and uh, the Harmony Chorus. We've also invited the the Govert Choir, which is a, a local peel choir, and they specialise in singing sea chants. It's quite a different choir. Um, because we want to, other choirs to be involved as well. I appreciate this year the timing is a bit difficult, um, largely due to the, um, the arrangements that were made by the Harmony Chorus of when they could come to, mm-hmm. to, to the Isle of Man. But in future, we hope that the, the timing will be better in the year, that more of the island choirs can become involved in performing uh, during the festival and then performing together, which is one of the things we will do at the end of the concert, is the choirs will sing together. Uh, and they'll sing a few pieces from a mix of traditions Um, but also it's a chance for choirs to sing choirs choristers and singers to meet with other singers from across the world to meet with singers from a different cultural background a different cultural identity and share ideas and what's your view then on the sort of the choral tradition at the moment whether either here on the Isle of Man obviously which you're closely associated with or or even on a, on a larger scale I mean I think we're blessed on the Isle of Man because we have a wonderful music tradition and <clears throat> we're very lucky we have lots of choirs we have lots of singing and young people are singing here I mean young I have not only choruses at the cathedral but I mean look at look at what's happening in the kind of the um, the, the kind of performing arts West End side. There are several theatre schools, several dance schools across the island. They will have singing groups. There may not be choirs in the traditional sense, mm. but they will be singing. And there are lots of children that are still singing. I think choral singing is uh, in in a about to undergo a renaissance. I mean, obviously, COVID changed the world, uh, but I think I think we're coming through that, and I think people are going back to it. Um, I think it teaches all sorts of skills. Um, it's, there's, there's, there's huge amounts of research that say how singing benefits mental, spiritual health and, and develops skills, which, which children are beginning to pick up on. Excellent. We keep our fingers crossed. We look forward to hearing the choir. Just give us the dates again then. So there's the, like I said, there's the workshop and there's the performance at the Peel Centenary Centre. Yes, the workshop uh, is, is a, a, a closed workshop, but it's actually in the same day as the concert. The performance, the grand performance, is on the 31st of August at 7.30. It'll be compared by Judith Lay and it will feature both the Harmony Chorus, uh, the Cathedral Choir and also the Peel Govid Choir and um, uh, tickets, £10, available on the door or via the Centenary website. Sounds like a great blending of cultures, and let's hope that choir festival can grow legs and voices and become a melting pot of choral talent in years to come. To finish this evening, a trip north to check out the latest exhibition at one of my fave galleries and catch up with its curator, Julia ashby Smythe. You can probably tell uh, we are at the uh, Loom Gallery. I think that's the Loom going downstairs. The hard at it uh, as we speak, just in the lower floor, upstairs in the uh, lovely gallery to uh, just catch up on a couple of things and uh, have a quick word with uh, Julia, who's uh, here as always. Um, Two things, one, an exhibition coming up. And while we're here, there's actually an exhibition on. Tell us a bit more about this one. This is the Creative Networks, part of the art festival that's going on on the island at the moment. And so we put on an exhibition that lasts for the entirety of the art festival and then spills over so we capture some of the Grand Prix visitors and gives people time to actually come in and peruse at their leisure instead of running around for the art festival. So we've got 17 creative art, creative network artists showing here at the moment. And the this exhibition sort of moves around the island? There are three centres of... Excellent. I'll use it. Yeah. can't think of another word. <laughs> so it started off in the south, and so you had open studios and exhibitions going on in the south of the island in Castletown. And then the second weekend, which was last weekend, it was in the west in Peel, the House of Mananan, and in Douglas. And then this weekend, in the 19th and 20th for some places, it comes up to the north and you've got open studios like Rebecca De- Odessa up in the north and Quails Hall in Ramsey. Um, and we're doing a, a Meet the Artist on Saturday, the 19th, between 12 and 3. And uh, Ronnie Doyle will be doing a watercolour de- demonstration. And some of the artists will be here for arty chats and questions and loitering. 
Talk us through a couple of pieces then here while we're here, because we're standing in front of a large, well, all right, I'd call it an abstract canvas. You're going to probably tell, tell me it's not an abstract canvas now, but it's a piece by Anna, Andrew McKellar, Erebus it's called. Striking, love it. Never had a wall big enough, I'll put it up. Abstract, yes. Um, acrylic, and it has fabulous colours, and it is really striking, especially on the, the grey. Uh, but that is because the exhibition is so diverse in its um, what we've got on show here. We have abstract and we have, um, if you want to call it realistic, mm -hmm. uh, landscapes. We have photography, we've got fused glass, we've got ceramic sculpture, we've got very cheeky hair and beautiful ceramic bowls and um, solar prints, etchings. There's a wide diverse range of mediums techniques and styles there is you mentioned the glass just round here this one also caught my eye there's a couple of these gorgeous plates this one here uh, deborah tracy under the same sky and it's i don't know it's fascinating it's it's sort of like a, a sort of shallow plate as it were and it's in blue glass i think yeah. it is yes kiln formed glass uh, but it's it's just holed all over like a sort of uh, sort of slightly deformed glass Gruyere cheese almost. It's a the fabulous piece and the shadows that it creates are just delightful, especially as it moves through the day. And it is inspired by the Manx skies. It's Deborah Tracy's and she also does ILB Creative. So she does workshops um, in glass, which are really well attended and very exciting. Uh, so she has a few pieces in here. They're all beautiful colors. Uh, and the pieces in the windows, the way the say the light and the shadow is moves through them are beautiful. Yes, they are really lovely. And she says they are inspired by the magnificent Manx sky. And uh, as you were saying, she loves the idea of playing with the light and shadows coming through the glass and the space in between the pieces of glass as well. Uh, right up above that, one of the more realistic ones. You say a fantastic barn owl flying straight out of you, out of a canvas. Uh, Ali Foster, that one. Yep. Yeah, again, it's there is abstract nature to it and but it's it does fly straight out here it is really imposing but the colors in that are fabulous they are terrific and then just looking over here there's uh, more pieces of sculpture a couple of seals there a hair which is rather fine uh, this nice piece here one of colleen call it's which is called doodle three-sided pot which is yeah it's fascinating it has a sort of at first i thought it was celtic and then it sort of could be almost sort of islamic or um Neither of the above. Yeah, it could even be Aztec-like. Um, I think that's why it's doodle, because it's, it's just she's formed the clay as she's, as she's doodled with clay. Yeah. Uh, and it gives such a lovely feel. It has a, like a, almost an ancient feel to it, and it's certainly an ancient form. But it, yeah, and the, then she's got the enamels in it, which glisten, which is a lovely touch as well. It is terrific, though. It's a lovely bowl underneath, doing the same sort of style with the glistening sort of piece based in the bottom. And then over on the wall over here, a couple of great pieces uh, just in front, which again, getting back to more, I don't know, I suppose you'd call them a realist art, as you say. A lovely one here, which I think it is a watercolour, yeah, Ronnie Doyle, uh, the dune out in Baldwin. And uh, yeah, that's lovely. It's got a great sort of airy feel of a sort of late summer's day and just a solitary figure going up towards what looks like an old fault and it's uh yeah one of those lovely dreamy ones you could lose yourself in it is you can see the dune uh from the mountain road if you're going towards windy corner and you look down the furthest up of the old sultans is the dune which means fortress i now know because i had to look it up for somebody no i didn't know either no. <laughs> um but it is there's the colors in the watercolor the way he has them blending into each other it's very clever how long is this exhibition on this goes on till the 16th of September, and we're open Monday to Saturday, 10 till 5. Check out the exhibition while you can. Some beautiful pieces there, as we indicated. Next week, we'll hear more from Julia about a forthcoming exhibition, which I'm very excited about, as it's all about fungi. That's about it this week. Don't forget, if you want to hear anything again, go to maxradio.com, download the Spotlight podcast, listen where and when you want. Why not try it whilst out foraging for fungi in the woods? Take your headphones. See you next week. Until then, look after yourselves and whatever you're doing, be creative about it. Cheerio. Cheerio.